I'm Lorna Dawson and I'm a research scientist here at the James Hutton Institute in Aberdeen. Soil science is, is one of the tools in the evidential and investigative toolbox of the uh, police investigators. A forensic soil scientist is one of the ologists, one of the scientists that helps the police in two main areas. One is that of search. So for example, if the police suspect someone of having buried something or somebody somewhere, um, they would come to us with the spade that was in the boot, let's say, of the suspect's vehicle. So we would analyse the soil on the spade and using that to compare with the database that we've got here in Scotland, we've also got a fantastic database in England and Wales, but here in Scotland we've got an archive as well. And we can compare that question soil on the item with the values that are held in the database. So we can exclude vast areas of land, thus narrowing down the area where the police are prioritising their search. That's one aspect. The other aspect is the evidence or the evaluation of the information that you get when comparing that soil that was on the spade with, say, the soil with where the tools were dug. So we compare that soil and we can give an evidential um, association of whether that was the spade that was used to dig that particular hole. Um, that combines all the soil information of soil organic profile, uh, soil mineralogy, soil elemental profile, depending on the particular case question. So yes, I think increasingly it's being used as one of the most important tools in the environmental armory of tools to help fight crime. I think the answer to that is um, it's best not even to try um, because increasingly the police and the international agencies are using a whole range of tools that if they're not able to catch the person now, they will be in the years to come because we're seeing that in cold case investigations that maybe at the time there weren't the genetic tools, there wasn't the DNA, but now they're being brought to bear and people are being fought and justice prevails. The most challenging part, I think, is having to disassociate it with what's going on in that particular case context. It's important that the forensic scientist stays objective and impartial. And when looking at data, we often um, anonymise the samples so that there cannot be any potential bias. And also because, uh, as a forensic scientist, you have to act on behalf of the court. So any evidence that you present um, has to be presented whether it favours the prosecution or whether it favours the defence proposition. So um, it's, it is challenging, but I think it's important to stay dissociated from any of the emotive side of any case that we work on. Well, that's an interesting question because I think it's very important that, if possible, uh, forensic scientists can work with the media and that includes programmes like Silent Witness, Vera, um, some of the crime authors I've worked with, Stuart McBride, Lynn Anderson, Val McDermott. Um, all these people have come to me and have asked me questions to make sure that if they're using forensic soil scientists, they're using the information in the most appropriate way. And the reason that is vitally important is because of the legal system that we operate under, um, we have jury system so that every member of that jury is a member of the general public. And they're much more likely to understand their science if it's read in the novels they read, if it's viewed from the television programmes that they watch. It's so important that they are not getting a biased opinion about what the science can deliver. Because we've got to understand that a lot of the science is not categoric and that there are uncertainties associated with what is presented. And they have to understand the science in a 
logical and comprehensive way that is communicating at the level of the general public's understanding. So I think it's vitally important that we take the time as scientists to try and communicate that science. I'm a robotics guy, so I'm really keen on robots, but I think I'm also a human being.